having a core, a mantle, a crust, etc., and that crust solidified. Um, the two halves of Mars are very different from each other, and I'll talk. To the, I'll I'll speak about that as well. The northern half is much lower than the southern half. Um, that's called the global dichotomy. Um, there were a huge number of cataclysmic and, and also smaller impacts that really shaped early Mars. It, not only its topography, but quite possibly the magnetic field as well. Um, there was a lot of volcanism, huge, huge uh, amount of that in uh, early Martian history. There's, there was plenty throughout Martian history too, but all, again, as in most things here, most of the action was, was early on. And that released a whole load of, um, of volatiles into the atmosphere as well. Uh, and that, that, that affected the climate evolution. The Pharsis province is a huge volcanic area. Um, takes up about a quarter of the entire part of, of, of the planet. And uh, there's a huge area where magma was, um, was bubbling up from the, uh, the mantle. Uh, the pole of the planet actually actually reoriented itself, um, probably due to the growth of this Tarsus province to uh, to to minimize the, the planet's moment of inertia as the actual axis around which it's it's spun probably changed by up to thirty degrees as well. Um, we had the commencement and eventual demise of a magnetohydrodynamic core dynamo, i.e., producing a magnetic field, a global dipole-shaped magnetic field, much like the one we have on Earth. Um, uh, through through this uh, magnetic field and through various crustal processes, uh, the crust acquired uh, in intense magnetization, and that magnetization pattern was was thereafter modified by various geological processes. Um, there were precipitation-fed uh, networks of, of uh, valleys, floodplains, areas where there were huge amounts of water released over at least a, uh, we don't know if it was um, episodic or lasted for uh, hundreds of millions of years. And there was, again, because of that, there was aqueous alteration and subsequent acidic weathering of surface minerals. I won't, I won't get into that, but that's also an important part. And lastly, and importantly for Maven, escape of some fraction of the atmosphere into space. and. Uh, that is related to when and uh, well, when the magnetic field appears. A, so Martian cratering chronology is sort of hokey. It's not. It's not really. It's not really that good, to be honest. But uh, people sometimes don't like to admit that. So it basically comes from the moon because on the moon we took rocks back from the moon and we radioisotop radioisotopically dated them in Earth laboratories and we counted the density of craters at the locations where those rocks were found and said, okay, well, these, these rocks are 3.8 billion years old, so that, that density of craters must correspond to that age. And then so people took that um, relationship between absolute age and cratering density on the moon and they, they shifted it to Mars. Uh, they, had to, they had to make an adjustment for the size of the average impactor at Mars's orbit from, uh, around the sun versus Earth's orbit and uh, they had to compensate for different gravity. So it's, it's uh, a Martian absolute cratering chronology is a bit of an oxymoron because we don't really know. But it's probably good, it, it's, it's certainly good in a relative sense. The, the more heavily cratered something is, the older it is, but in terms of absolute chronology, it could be wrong way up to a couple hundred million years, and that's something to, to, to keep in mind. Uh, this, these are called isochrons. Now this is number of craters per square kilometer, so how heavily dense, how heavily cratered it is, and this is the diameter of the craters, and this is a cumulative plot. So, um, if you let's say you put a point there, that means that uh, craters larger than 250, uh, 250 meters, there are this many of them per square kilometer. Uh, and so, lines along this plot represent ages: 10,000 years, 100,000 years, million years, 10 million, 100 million, etc., etc., etc. Now, at some point, a surface can be so heavily cratered that you're just obliterating other craters and it becomes uh, saturated. And that's sort of where we are around here, where it's difficult to tell how much older something might be because you reach a saturation cratering density where you can't get any more. 